Lesson 56, Finding Angles of Rotation. Hey. So the standard position of an angle is when the vertex is at the origin. The terminal side, it's the ray that you are looking at to see the angle measure. The initial side is the ray on the x-axis. The angle of rotation is the measure of the angle formed when starting at the initial side and ending at the terminal side counterclockwise. Angle of rotation, you always go counterclockwise unless told otherwise. So here's some examples. Um, draw a 60 degree angle in standard position. So you would draw your coordinate plane. The initial side is the x-axis, the vertex on the origin, and you would go counterclockwise 60 degrees. And there's my drawing. How about a 440 degree angle? Yes, sir. Tan? Um, so which one is initial and which one's terminal? Initial is always the x axis. The terminal is the one, the ray that you look at to see how many degrees away from the x-axis it is. Um. So if I do 440 minus 360, I get 80 degrees. Wait, is that true? <coughs> <coughs> So my angle's going to end approximately right there. So 440 degrees starts at the x-axis, goes counterclockwise, one, and then to there. And then what if I want to draw negative 125 degrees. So let's see, nine, 125 minus 90 is 35. So I go this way. So now I'm going to go clockwise, 125 degrees. And this would be negative 125 degrees. And it would also be a positive whatever 30, 360 minus 125 is. Tan? Um, so, the 440, do you have to put the circle? Mm, I don't think so. Or how 
how do you show that it's a 440 degree? Yeah, thing? you better put your circle in. The circle's probably the next one. Yeah. Looks like in all the examples they have those drawn in. Yes, Carter. Um, right there, after 60 degree angle, does that say in and position? In, yes, that's an in. Sorry, my pen is, it's my pen's fault. Yes? What if it doesn't specify at certain positions? Always, yeah, we always do, pretty much. I don't know, unless they told you it started at somewhere else. But I don't know why they would. Um, we're co-terminal angles. Basically, they share the same terminal side. So, like, um, for example, this 440 degrees is the same as an 80 degree angle. And there's a formula for it. If you take your x degrees and add 360 times any number n. So this 440 degree angle has an infinite number of coterminal angles because it just depends on what n is. So like if, if our angle measures 80 degrees, if we add 360, we'll get 440. We can add 360 again. We can even subtract 360, subtract it again. So they're, and they'll all, wait, can, does n have to be positive? If it's negative, if you have 80 degrees minus 360, you still end up in the same spot. So yeah, it can be negative. Justin. I'm confused. What is n? N is any number. N is contained in the set of real numbers. There you go. Okay. Okay. Except decimals. Never mind. Thank you. They are contained in the set of, what are those numbers? Integers. How do you write integers using, is it a Z? Now I can't remember. Here, we'll go like this. What? Tan. So 440 degrees and 80 degrees are the same? 440 degrees and 80 degrees are co-terminal angles, yes. Tally. Yes. Negative goes clockwise, positive angles go counterclockwise. So I guess if you could see the arrow starts here, it always starts at x. This is going counterclockwise, so this is a positive. This one starts at x, it's going clockwise, so this is a negative angle. So you can tell by which way the angle is going from the initial side. So we're going to do an example of these coterminals. with 54 degrees. So one positive, we could just do 360 plus 54. So 414 degrees is coterminal. And then we could do maybe negative 360 plus 54 degrees. And negative 306 degrees. Yes? Will the initial side always be the positive x-axis? Yes, by definition it is. Yes. So the term like coterminal, does that mean that like 414 degrees is coterminal to 54 like degrees. Oh, yep. 254 degrees. Not yes, not they degrees. are coterminal angles. So coterminal width, maybe. I think width would probably be better. Okay. Because that just means they end at the same spot. Okay. Yes, Hal. So would that be for uh, 414 is also coterminal with negative 306. Yes. Okay. Very good. Yes. Justin. I wanted to know, like, like more than two. I wanted to know, like, like, maybe three or four. Would you just add 360 to those? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
or you could times 360 by a number, an integer, and then add it to your angle you're trying to get. Yes, Spencer. One way that I, well, that I found, check your answer. So if you make all the numbers positive and negative and add them together, you're always going to have to get 720. What? You do? Yeah, just these ones or it's always? Plus 360 both times, you know. It's just if you ch to check your answer. So you get the two numbers oh. and then you add them together. You know, if they're both positive or both negative, you're going to always get 720. Or you should. If or you, does it matter, like, if you doubled the one and subtracted, like, subtracted two? You can also add, subtract, add, subtract, add, subtract X and get a multiple of 360. I got one, I got yeah. one of eight. That's a multiple of 360. Carter. Um, could you go back for, like, two seconds? No. Okay, so reference angles always measure less than 90 degrees. So, in other words, they're going to be in the first quadrant. So you would take, oh, never mind. It's not always the first quadrant. Erase what I just said. Don't listen to that part, but this is what it is. It's just how far away is the angle from the x-axis. That's it. Like, how far away from the x-axis. So that would be your reference angle. So you measure from the terminal side. to the x-axis. Yes. So I will show you by example, and you'll see. I think it will be a lot easier with an example. Find the reference angle for theta equals 115 degrees. So if I draw my 115 degrees, so I go right about there. 115 degrees. My reference angle is how far away from the x-axis. So this is the reference angle. So you could do, it is for this one. So you could do 180 minus 115. You could do 90 minus 25, because you know that this is 25 over the 90 degree mark. So if you did the 180 degrees minus 115, you would get 65 degrees. So that would be your reference angle. It's always positive, I think. A pretty positive positive. Ah, oh, this one's not. It's negative. So let's do find the reference angle for theta equals negative 55 degrees. Ah. If they give you an angle measure, negative 55 degrees. If they give you an angle measure whose absolute value is already less than 90 degrees, then that's the reference angle. So the reference angle here would just be 55 degrees because that's how far away from the x-axis negative 55 degrees is. Yes, Carter. Well, so for an obtuse angle like the 115, isn't it just the angle that's supplementary to it? Yes, it is. So the reference angle of negative 100 degrees, so if you take the absolute value of it, so it would be 80. So 80 degrees away from the x-axis. So yes, Holland. So it's like switched for the reference angle because everything else is counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. It's so the reference positive. angle, that's true, it is always positive because you're just telling how many degrees away from the x-axis it is no matter what quadrant it is in, just how far away from that x-axis. Yes? Yeah, it's basically absolute value. Like how far away are you from zero on the number line? How far away are you from zero on the x-axis? Yes, I think so. I can't picture that very well in my head. Netta. 
Um, so I got, I know you got the 55 from the negative 55, but how'd you get negative the 80 degrees on the second one? Oh, so that um, if you have, here, let me just draw it for you. Negative 100 degrees is like right there, right? So it is 80 degrees away from the x axis. That's like the smallest measurement. Oh. Smaller than one degree, but bigger than zero degrees. So with the negative fifty-five, you it would it would be like on the other side, you know. Yeah, it would be over here, so but it it's still fifty-five degrees away. Yeah, that's oh, the closest. Just how far away it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just how far away it is. Uh, so it's going to be positive because it's a, a distance. That distance. maybe that's how you can remember because it's how far. So it's a distance that's going to be positive. Tally. How do you know where? Oh, just guess. it's 360 degrees all the way around, and I know the first quadrant's the first 90 degrees, second quadrant's the next 90, so it goes 90, 36, I mean, 90, 180, 270, and then 360. And if it's greater than 360, I always take away multiples of 360 till I get a number between 0 and 360, then I'll know where the terminal side is. So I kind of cut it up into 90s to help me know, like, 120 is going to be in this quadrant because it's 180 to there and 90 to there. So R, we call R the distance from the origin to a point on the terminal side. So if you have a point on the terminal side, you're going to have an x and y value. And to find the distance to the origin, it's just the square root of x squared plus y squared. So r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. It's just how far away is that point from the origin. So if you have for a point x, y on the terminal side, of theta, that's your angle, in standard position, in standard position and r equals root x squared plus y squared. So um, the sine of theta is y divided by r. The cosine of theta is x divided by r. And the tangent of theta is y over x as long as x does not equal 0. So if you know the point, you can find the sine, the cosine, the tangent. You can find um, r. So we're going to do an example, finding trig functions when you know a point. So you're given point 6, 8, and that's on the terminal side of theta. Find the six trig functions. Um, I feel like the distance should be 10 because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So R is just going to be 10. So the sine of theta is Y, which is 8 tenths, where you could reduce to 
4 fifths. The cosine of theta is going to be 6 tenths or 3 fifths and the tangent is going to be 4 thirds. Then we have the cosecant which is the inverse of the sine so it's just 5 fourths. The secant the inverse of the cos so 5 thirds and the cotangent is the inverse of the tangent, which is 3 fourths. And that's the end of the lesson, so we'll answer questions after I end my video.